Well, uh, good evening and welcome to Restart Sailing 26, isn't it, John? Amazingly. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it's really good to be here. Nice to see you, Simon. And we have an absolutely packed show today with uh, COVID uh, updates and yeah. how they affect sailing and, uh, regattas. First of April, but I think we've passed the uh, the twelve o'clock uh, deadline. Yeah, there's, so. there's, there's no jokes here. We've got the uh, Ilka uh, celebrating its fiftieth uh, birthday, and lots of news and, and updates coming up. Yeah, yeah. but uh, amazing how our three stages are still highly relevant. You know, now what a year year plus, and uh, how we 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 we're going to go more into it. But how we're going from local to uh, international and uh, back again, isn't it? Yeah, so there's, we've got focus from everything here from uh, grassroots sailing, uh, and there's nothing more grassroots than the, the day boat that became the, the Orca, uh, all the way up to the uh, speculating about the Olympics for those people who are interested. Yeah, right. So let's move on. So uh, the UK is looking very good, I think, isn't it? Yes, I think the UK protected daily infections is looking absolutely fantastic. Uh, things are looking a lot uh, brighter in May, and I think that's something to be incredibly proud of. And I think a lot of that is associated with uh, getting the vaccines uh, rolled out, and it, it means that we should hopefully, in a in a local sense, be looking forward to a summer of sailing. Yes, and I think we're now what over fifty percent of the population with uh, suitable antibodies. Isn't it? Yes, well, well over fifty percent because there's over fifty percent which have been vaccinated, and there seems to be a very high correlation with countries with high uptake of uh, vaccination uh, with how they're how they're doing at the moment. Yes. And now the next slide, people keep on asking about the Olympics, and you can see that Japan is also on the way down. Uh, they're quite a lot slower than the UK in their vaccine rollout, but it does look like things will be under control for a very different Olympic Games this year. And that's that's a really important thing um, to, to a lot of people. I mean, it, there won't be spectators, there won't even be people uh, accompanying uh, the athletes, partners, etc. Uh, but it does look like it will happen. Um, although maybe we don't even go there till the 1st of July, which for sailors is a very... Um, unusual thing but uh, unfortunately if we move on to the next slide we can see the current situation in Bulgaria uh, which is uh, well it, it's not good um, and the, the problem here is that Bulgaria's had a um, quite a lot of flouting of the rules so people have sort of gone against um, the social distancing and the wearing masks and the, and the vaccine uptake has been poor and that's really reflected in the current number of new cases which sadly will be reflected in due course in the number of uh, deaths and it's it's not only that other countries will add uh, quarantine days of quarantine for people going to these so-called red countries or even close their border I mean I wouldn't be surprised if the border to Bulgaria uh, gets closed so no surprise that Ilka I've just realized I missed out one vital bit of information there uh, the Ilka senior Europeans in Bulgaria has now been postponed uh, to 2021 um, but I think that's probably just a bit of relief for a lot of athletes because they know now uh, that they don't have to drive uh, 4,000 kilometers from Villamora and I do have to say uh, because there's a lot of questions about this that this travel uh, is only for the British sailing team so those people who are paid to compete in the Olympic circuit are allowed to travel uh, because it's essential for their job those people who are in the British sailing team they're under the elite program so they're allowed to, to compete uh, and the other people are allowed to travel who are people who get paid to do their job so that's race officials media and coaches so a lot of people ask me about my own situation so I was uh, or still am I'm very pleased to say a member of the Weymouth and Portland National Sailing Academy but I was not allowed to sail uh, at all very very recently because I'm not a member of the British sailing team uh, but I am an elite coach, I'm an Olympic coach, so I was able to carry on my job in sunny Villamora and sunny Lanzarote. Um, yeah. So the, the people who've really done very well out of this are the people who've tried so hard uh, to run COVID safe events. So the, the Canary Islands and uh, Villamora Sailing, who's going to be uh, hosting the Finn uh, Open and European uh, Championships uh, very shortly. Um, for people to go, they do need to have a, an invitation 
letter from the organisers to show that it's essential travel. And we're actually working on having exemption for elite athletes from quarantine for some of these regattas. So sailors don't have to go and quarantine for 14 days before they can race. And I think that's probably what's going to happen for Japan. There'll be some sort of special sailor bubble. So when people arrive, they can stay in their bubble and uh, continue to, to train because everybody has to have a PCR test now uh, to travel in the first place. So I've just got to say thumbs up for uh, Lance Rotti and particular Marina Rubicon who just did the most amazing Olympic qualifier uh, for the 49ers, FX and NACRA and the same to Villamora who are looking uh, not only at hosting um, these Finn European Championships but it looks to me like they're going to host a whole series of uh, regattas um, for Ilkers as well as other people um, all the way up to July when athletes can go to the Games so maybe three, four day regattas, something like that. It, it is interesting to see sort of some of the well slightly different venues coming to the fore, you know. And, uh... Yeah, well, they work very hard, and uh, you know, for the Canary Islands, it was very good because uh, you know they're naturally isolated. You come in and out by plane, and if you look at Portugal as a whole, they're doing well, but especially down south where Bill and Moore are sailing, that state or region. Uh, has, has controlled the situation very well and they have a very good relationship um, with the local authorities because everybody knows that they're doing it in a really, really safe way and yeah. felt very comfortable there. Um, but closer to home, we are continuing with the Restart Sailing Chats. Lots of really good stories out there. And the next one will be with uh, Team World Jibe and their amazing adventure. So I won't, uh, I won't spoil that for you. But for uh, people who are missing their 7 p.m. Uh, fix on a Thursday, uh, we're going to have a chat with uh, Sam and Josh, what they're up to. Yeah, and good to see such a diverse range of activities going on. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, just just remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and you'll you'll get all these chats. You'll get a notification just like you would do on Facebook. And uh, yeah, there's lots of content out there as people are getting back into it. Yeah, and I see yeah lots of activity on the Restart Sailing group. Uh, people, you know, clubs and classing asking me some of the key questions and things like changing rooms coming up a lot. You know, that, yeah, that one well, seems I to go away. Think, I was I was thinking now the weather's changed. Uh, the, the necessity for changing rooms has probably sorted itself out a little bit. Um, but maybe I'm going to find it quite cold coming back from Lanzarote, especially if I finally get a haircut. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's coming up, isn't it? 12th of April. <laughs> so, yeah, if we look through, we're now yeah, the 29th of March. Our outdoor sport and major activities are going. And uh, it's good to see that, the, uh, in a way, the roadmap's been followed at the moment, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, there was a slight uh, uptick associated with the school's opening, but really nothing... Um, uh, yeah. nothing to worry about i think that, that was we, that was anticipated wasn't it really? you know, yeah. absolutely so we're on track but now is really not the time to do anything uh, silly and i think sailing as a sport has been incredibly responsible and i think the roa have done a, a, a cracking job in very very difficult Services. Well, that's right. So the next key date is the, the 12th of April when some of these sort of outdoor hospitality opens and then uh, moving into the 17th of May and then towards the 21st of June. But as, as you said, the REA are sort of constantly remapping. And, uh, yeah, but I think it's definitely an evolution rather than a revolution. And I'll point out that all these roadmaps and all these documents could easily be found on the Restart Sailing group, just yeah. to be clear, the group. And we're getting on for 3,000 members last time I looked. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, so really, yes, 29th of May, it was really the start of activities. And I think, yeah, we're seeing some good pictures coming out of the happy, smiling faces. And, uh, well, the one thing which uh, has meant a lot to me is just how frustrated people were when they couldn't go sailing. And I think that shows, you know, just how much they care. And I think sailing is going to have a bit of a boom after this. And in terms of the full-time sailors, just you can't believe how good the atmosphere is at, at just every regatta that, that happens. I think people really miss the uh, the racing, so it's right away yeah. from the and I think I think people are realising how good sailing is, don't they? And, and uh, having having taken away, I think that's when you uh, appreciate it for the most, don't you? <laughs> right, so moving on, joined by uh, Rob. So welcome, Rob is the Ulka. UK class chairman. Did I get that right, Rob? I have that's to concentrate. About, that's about it, John. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I chair the ILFA class association 
uh, for the time being. Uh, my so you, I was going to say you, your, your class association has a big birthday coming up. Yeah. It does, it yeah. does. It's, uh, we're, we're, we're 50 this year. Um, yeah. So massive um, amount of um, activity around that celebration. I mean, for, for a dinghy class, I think it's quite a big deal. But for, for, for us, there's just so many, you know, we have so many members, so many people sail the boat. Um, and as, as you said earlier, John, there's, there's this pent up demand as we come out of lockdown. Um, people are just just so keen to get out in their boats and keen to plan plan their summer sailing. Um, so we we got we got a, a massive celebration of our 50th woven through our calendar. For the I mean, we need to save up, don't we? This is a worldwide celebration, oh, yeah. absolutely um, worldwide. We, we're just doing the UK bit, but obviously. Um, that 50 years is being celebrated in, in pretty much every country that's, that, that sails the boat. And that is pretty much every country. <laughs> exactly. There are a couple of countries that have no ilkas or lasers as, as we once were, uh, but there aren't many. So uh, it, is a, it, is a, it is a global celebration of, of probably the most popular dinghy class in the world. Yeah. I should also mention, we talked about Billamora Sailing earlier, they're going to be hosting the, um, the last opportunity for European countries to get a place for the Olympics. So that is going to be a really amazing regatta. And I think pretty much everyone's going to be there just to, just to get the racing. So um, yeah, the, the laser class is doing great things at the moment. And uh, we're now now going forward with the, with the new name uh, Ilka, but same boat, same great people. And uh, same great racing. Yeah, and it was great to see last year you managed to get the nationals in, Rob. I think that was one of the very few nationals, wasn't it? So, uh, uh, plans yeah. for this year? <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, we were. Uh, I say we were lucky. We did a huge amount of planning. Uh, the original host for our nationals had to withdraw because they had quite a lot of volunteers. Um, to be honest, at a certain age, and they, they, I think they did, they took the right call. But we, we decided that um, we looked at whether or not we could hold a COVID safe event. And um, we originally thought we possibly could if we went to a venue that had a lot of professional staff and, 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 and we knew could hold the very best event uh, events. So we ended up um, we going back to Weymouth, where we, Weymouth Portland Sailing Academy, where we, we go quite a lot, knowing the professionalism of that outfit. And we started off thinking that this would be a very, very different event in, in, in a COVID world. We, we didn't actually originally, we didn't, we said it's not a nationals. We, we called it a, 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 a an Ilka regatta because we didn't feel that we could hold an event that you could reasonably award a national championship uh, to. But as, as the planning progressed, we, we found that actually there will be a huge amount of change, but we could realistically call it a, a nationals and we ended up with our biggest turnout for five or ten years i mean we had way uh, over 100 i mean john you were there we had what yeah i have years. to say now it just feels like a normal regatta all regattas are like that now <laughs> yeah the vibe the vibe as john is implying was was fantastic everybody was just desperate to go sailing in the way john's described and they were just pleased least to be out in their boat and it didn't really matter what the results the results of course they always matter but really well, it wasn't surprising that ellen alley won <laughs> no um, the other the other thing that for the, for the weekend warriors like myself was that of course the british sailing team who would normally be competing in some high high level regatta somewhere else on the planet were were were, 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 were stuck in the uk so they came and raced with us and we had so we had the, the very best, which often we, we, we don't have. So we had the Olympic guys, their, their backup, their training partners. Um, and we had a lot of club sailors come and join us as well. And they surprised themselves at how much they enjoyed it. And the I mean, quite a few people who had had a break from the class and then were just keen to go racing again. And I see for this year's nationals, you've, you've timed it so people can get back from the Olympics in time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, Just. That, that was a, a, a happy coincidence, I think. Um, yes, we, we, we're holding the Nationals again this year. At, it's going to be at Weymouth again. Um, you know, as, as John said, just to go back a, a point, last year we, 
we held it at a time when you couldn't sail a, a two-man boat, uh, or you could as long as you were with somebody in your bubble, but your normal crew. And most people, most people, a lot of people have got an old Ilka or, or, or laser. Or, or they can get hold of one if they really they want to. borrow one. And we had a lot of that at last year's Nationals where people went, oh, yeah, I'm, I can't do my Merlin Rocket Nationals or whatever, but I can, I can go to Weymouth and, and join or, the... Or other classes, Rob. <laughs> or, or any other two-man classes. Or any other two-man <laughs> classes are available. Um, <laughs> Indeed. So we had so the event was just in, incredible fun, and uh, we will replicate that this year. Um, this year, our nationals is the is the week before the under twenty one worlds, which means that we're going to have a lot of um, very good, very young uh, sailors come and join us from hopefully from other countries, um, which will just make the event even bigger and and even better. Sounds and, like absolutely perfect timing to me. I think uh, it'd be great if more venues could try and try and do that, so people can come and get two or even three regattas for their for their trip. Indeed, in, indeed, and we're and as part of that, we will as part of the nationals, we'll be celebrating the fifty years, and we've we've got a lot of the uh, great and the good from from our history coming to join us, and we're hopeful that a few of those who've spent the last few months out in New Zealand. Um, may well actually be be at Weymouth uh, celebrating the 50 years with us. So uh, that would be something very special. Yeah, fingers crossed. Right. Okay. So moving on. So the focus at the moment, I think, John, is more from a, a local sailing perspective, isn't it? So uh, absolutely. And I think uh, that fits into our sort of a sailing challenge. We're encouraging people to really race at their club, um, and then we'll sort of take the results, you know, using uh, GPS and sort of a uh, merge them together, um, which sort of fits into obviously with the uh, the Selden series and Selju series. That uh, at the moment we won't be uh, re restarting the events until sort of uh, after May to fit in with the the. Uh, current sort of COVID sort of guidelines but the idea is that you're going to race at your own club and then uh, we take that data and then, then restart back in sort of May so I think this is a chance as you say to get get local get sailing at your own club and uh, remind yourself how good it is. Yeah and I just think the idea of re resetting reinvigorating there's lots of arts for, for club sailing is so important and uh, I did see quite a few photos from Castle Cove and Weirwood, etc. on the 29th of March. I think it was the yeah, 29th of March. And uh, I felt quite jealous <laughs> having been yeah. on the water every day, but probably not sailed this year. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm I, think, I think it hopes. I think we, we had the warmest March day on Tuesday, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. It is also the big, pretty much the biggest tides of the year at the moment. <laughs> well, it is. Well, that, that fits around Easter, doesn't it? Easter... Easter fit, fits around the uh, the moon, doesn't it? And the equinox, equinox, and all that. So yes, it'll be big, big tides this weekend. But uh, hopefully, we we'll get some sunshine as well. Right. So, uh, as we uh, spot of coaching. So oh. I did this especially for Rob, who can, uh, who's still listening in. Um, <laughs> that uh, it's really important to measure your Ilka. See, I'm getting better. <laughs> this is an Ilka six, uh, which I think will probably be changing uh, everywhere. Uh, from September time to a fully composite mast. Uh, but at the moment for the international regattas in general and for Olympic Games, it's an alloy bottom section, as in this picture, and a composite top. And I think what the class has done amazingly well is a gradual evolution. So if you look at the pictures with the upside down three to one kicker, which we had 50 years ago, and uh, you know what we have now where the strong guys actually take out purchases, uh, th there's just been so much innovation. I mean, the sails, especially the standard rig sail, you know, it lasts so much longer. And it's just this constant evolution of the class without wholly changing the boat. So I, I feel that they've got the balance absolutely right. And, you know, with any one design, there's small tolerances. So here I'm just um, measuring my boat because with a slightly further forward rigged boat, well, I'd want to put my slightly softer bottom section and so on. And also when you go to events and have a charter boat, if you're familiar um, with, with what the rake does and this sort of thing, then it just makes it easier to jump in. Because actually one of the beauties of the Ilka is the most important events, so the World Championships and the Olympic Games, are supplied equipment. So it really is the best sailor wins. 
Yeah, it's interesting. And is, is that you in the picture, John? That is me and my dear, dear departed dad in the top left. It made oh, me feel okay. very emotional. Okay. He gave me a lot of support in my sailing career, and I, I wouldn't be here without him. I can say and, the, uh, the, hair, the haircut shows the, yes, yes, the haircut uh, shows the dad. Yeah, I had, less, I had uh, less hair there and more hair in, in, the, in different ways, if that makes sense. But yeah, I am looking forward to... Um, to going back to having a bit of a haircut. I went to sign some books in the shop in um, in Japan at the Olympic venue. And obviously my haircut was so different last time I was there to in the book. The lady wondered what on earth I was doing, <laughs> trying to <laughs> scribble on all her books she had for sale. All right. I had to explain the owner had asked me to. You, you, were the, the, you were the real John Emmett, not me. <laughs> I am the real John Emmett, yes. <laughs> right, okay. So looking, looking forward. <laughs> So uh, we've got fantastic uh, guest uh, Tom Morris coming up. Check out his YouTube channel. Um, he's yeah, he's far better than I am at this stuff. And really nice to talk to the RSA 100, which I feel is the club sailors 49er. Uh, whether he will agree with that, we're we're see. Um, but certainly it offers you know high performance sailing uh, to uh, people without sort of the the, the budget and the absolute Olympic status and. I think uh, RS do a really good job as well for um, the club sailors. So we're really lucky in this country. Really lucky. Yeah, and, and Tom's been doing some fantastic jo um, work on his YouTube videos around the America's Cup, and he's been picked up by, yes. uh, by the international media. I think he's become more famous than uh, some of the top sailors, hasn't he? Yeah, we'll have, we have to get some tips from Tom when he's on. <laughs> we yeah. can definitely put some of his But he's on. done, I mean, he's using his sort of scientific background and a great sort of uh, drill down into some of the uh, the science between the boats and uh, those little minute things and uh, yeah so amazingly the uh, the national media uh, you know the, the, the press the tv have all picked up and they're using his he might, he might get himself a job in cows who knows <laughs> but we're, yeah. we're going to talk about the rs800 uh, for which i believe he's the current national champion uh, and um, without question uh, one of the very top sailors in the world yeah so we look forward to that in two two weeks time isn't it <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, Simon. And Bob, okay. thank you. Thank you, Rob.